Hey, Rothel here today. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make a simple Java application, which is a simple calculator app. And first things first, you have to make sure Eclipse is downloaded on your computer. So this is the download link for Eclipse that I will leave in the description below. So make sure Eclipse is downloaded. And this is the IDE that we'll be using for this tutorial. Also, we're all going to be using window builder to help um to help us build our application so some people are less keen on window builder i personally think it's what my uh is a very useful add-on to eclipse but since window builder is not installed in eclipse by default um you will have to follow a specific guide to get window builder installed so once you have it installed along with eclipse we can get started into making this simple application um, first we're gonna set our layout to absolute layout uh, which by the way if you're on the source simply go over down here and click design so make sure this tutorial will work if window builder is already installed so you have to install that before following this tutorial or else you will not get this whole windows over here but assuming you already have it installed, let's get rocking. So under components, make sure so make sure first that you have set the layout to absolute layout and label we're gonna drag in and set it to wherever you want it set. So I'm gonna set mine to the top. Oops. I'm sorry about that. The eclipse was hanging, so the screen went grey. But um, it's been fixed. So with this new label we can drag it wherever we want to so I'm gonna put mine on the very top and this is going to say so go over here and we're gonna put the label to say simple calculator uh, calculator app and make sure that you resize it so that the whole te text fits inside so this will be on the top it will simply say simple calculator app just like that um, but if we run our application, so let's run our app first. We don't have anything yet so far on the top. So what we want to do is we want to have a we want to have a name for this window. So go to source, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this frame. And since we want to have our since we're using JFrame. What we're gonna call it is um, Rafael Vicuña's Java Calculator. So, set a title for it, and we're gonna call this so Rafael Vicuña's Java Calculator. Um, that is my name. So, if you have, if you have a different name, of course, simply replace that with your own name. And if we run our application now, now it says Rafael Vicuña's Java Calculator on the very top when we ran it for the first time it didn't have that but since we set a title for our frame now it is actually popping up a title over here now let's go over back to the design and you can also see if it worked when it's o when you see that over there um let me go back to design there we go i got that glitch just fixed um so you can see if it worked uh, i hope you can see my cursor if the label if it's labeled Raffle Bikunis Java Calculator or whatever you called, uh, whatever you titled your frame, I should say. But that's enough with that. So, next thing we're gonna drag in, um, we're gonna drag in some text fields. So, go over to components and drag in a J text field, which I will make sure it's resized. And this is not going to say anything. So, make one over here. It's gonna one to the left, so that is one to and add in another text field and this is going to be the same size uh, actually it's not the same size let me resize this text field uh, it's hard to resize that okay now so now they are the same size um, we're gonna have two text fields and then we're gonna have another text field so add in an, another text field this will output the ans the answer in, in it. Should put that in here. Uh put that there. Okay. 
and then add in one other text field that will say actually no not another text field delete that so let me delete this one we're gonna add in another label and this label is gonna simply say um, it's hard to uh, drag stuff around in here but you'll get the hang of it if you use it a lot more this label is gonna say the answer is so resize this so it fits okay and last lastly we're gonna add in two buttons so let me move this calculator app label to the very top this button uh, this button over here is gonna say uh, let me put that up there a little bit more okay it's gonna say add and then you can probably guess what I'm gonna do for the next one which is going to be subtract so add in another button that is same line and it will say subtract and we want that strike in that when we want this that we want this to be on the same level I can't sorry this is annoying us I can't I can't move it properly here I'm gonna. Right, we're gonna drag in the subtract label, and we're gonna drag it to that. That is on line with the add button. So drag it up, maybe a bit higher. There we go. So we add. So how this calculator works is we input some numbers on these two text fields, and if we add it, the this third text field over here that I'm highlighting is going to um, be the sum of those two numbers that we have in our text fields, and if we subtract it will also output the value when it's subtracted so this answer is you don't really need to have this label here but I want it to be added just so that we know that this is where the answer will be um, this is where it will output the answer um, let's go over and add in one last label um, okay, and the label here is gonna say it's gonna say zero for now, but we will have a we'll have this um, in oop, control. Or oh, actually, no, we don't really need a label because since since we're using since we're using strings, we don't need that label at all. Um, let's simply get right into programming our buttons and what they do. So go go um, for this first text field, and we're gonna call this text field on um, number one. And we're gonna call the second text field as number two. And this last text field, the third one, is gonna be called text field answer. And we're gonna program our add button first. So click on our add button, and it should generate an action performed on a method over here. And what this is going to be is the code. So anything in the middle of these two parentheses is going to be the code um, of what will happen when we push the button so let's do by adding a few integers so we're gonna declare int number one comma number two and then lastly the answer so end that with a uh, semicolon so that you don't get an error I'm gonna do try and then bracket and I'm gonna do catch so catch um, exception E and then again make sure you have a parentheses over here and make sure these parentheses are put correctly so you do not get an error as you continue programming and we're gonna do number one so the first integer that we called number one equals in uh, to integer that um, we're gonna parse int they should pop up automatically and then whatever we called our text field so we call no don't worry about it uh, we, we can get rid of this first because we haven't um, done anything yet so you, it'll pop up an error because the code is the code has an error so it will not it will pop up on an error if you try to go to back to the design now whatever we called our text field so we called our text field number one um, go over yeah, go over back here to the source and we should say go back to try and we're going to do number one equals integer 
the, um, we're gonna parse int just like last time and now we called our text field number one and dot get text two brackets and a semicolon on the end so this text field number one has to match what you called your text field is so I called my three text fields as text field number one text field number two and then for the answers we called our text field answer so make sure that matches or else it will give you an error and it will not work and it can create extra errors along the way as you saw earlier and then we're gonna do a number two so this is the second integer so that will be integer that parse int and we're gonna control space actually no don't worry control space type in text field number two dot get text now these um, integers represent what numbers we're gonna be entering on these two text fields so if we're gonna say enter number two or enter number three they will be recorded uh, here so go underneath and well we want to make sure this answer so a and s um, equals now since we are coding for the ad for add so this button is addition so we're gonna do ant equals number one plus number two so this is basically saying get the number one plus number two and I'll put it in the third text field which I'm going to be coding in now so that we called ours text field answer text of field answer and what it's gonna have is a string so set the text and we wanted to output a string so integer dot to string and then we called our third integer as ants so ants which stands for answer so what that simply does is um, since you may be confused I'll explain it right now so this we have our um, integers recorded in our text field so we called our two text fields number one and number two now this third integer which is we called ANS or answer for short is pretty much number one plus number two so let's say number one was three and number two was six this answer integer will is the uh, value of those two numbers added and then we will output that in our third um, third text field and the string is answer now what if so what if we added a letter so we want this to be a calculator so we don't want to have any letters so the way we can prevent that problem is doing j option pain dot show a um, message dialog and we want this to say null and this will say please enter a valid number and close bracket with a semicolon I'll uh, make sure you have a make sure since this is a string so make sure you have two um, close speech marks at the end so yeah that's it so we have taken care of the problem where if we add in a value that is not a number this will take care of that issue okay so now let's um click run and let's run our application and see how it's functioning so far so let's do 4 plus 5 and if we add it will say the answer is 9 now if we do 6 plus 1 the answer is 7 but what we want to do is we want to also subtract so if we type in 5 plus t 5 minus 2 it is not changing because we have not programmed um, our subtract button yet so what we're gonna do is go back to design so go back to design and on the subtract button double click that and it should also auto generate an action performed method over here and pretty much all we need to do is just do the same thing so copy and paste everything you just did here and put it in here so let me put that there so it's less confusing now however what we want to do is we want to change this to answer equals number one now this time it is minus number two since since we are coding for our subtract button uh, whoop, we were coding for a subtract button now we need to make sure 
we are actually subtracting our two numbers. So let's click build and run again. Click OK. And if we do 5 plus 5 and let's click add, that will say 10. 7, 2, and we click subtract, we'll say 7 minus 2 is 5. So that is a simple calculator app that we had built in Java. So using Windows Builder and a, bit, a little bit of programming. So thank you all for watching. If this video helped you out, leave a like and I'll be making more Java tutorials in the future. Thank you.